All right, Luke chapter 29, starting with verse 39. Stay focused today, y'all. We're going somewhere. I promise you there's a word from the Lord. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. Verse 40. But the other criminal protested, don't you fear God? Even when you have been sentenced to die? 41. We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you today you will be with me in paradise. I need some encouragement. Anybody need a word today? Anybody come expecting a word? I dare you to look at somebody with a mask on then and just say, how do you know it's real? Look at somebody else and tell them, ask them, how do you know it's real? Look at one more person and just ask him, you're living by faith, but how do you know it's real? Father, I pray for anointing that will enable me to make the word speak clearly and to make the book talk today. I claim the authority to share the gospel in the name that is above each and every other name that has ever been uttered. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Around the world, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God, the other day, God told me, he said, you know why I get so disappointed in in my children, in my sons and my daughters. I said, God, I'd love to know. He said, yeah, you know why I get so disappointed in you all? It's because it is so easy for you to live by faith in every other area of your life than with me. It messed me up, Bernard, when he said it. He said, yeah, he said, it's so much. He said, I watch y'all go through your life day to day and see all these different places where in order for you to live and operate, you had to make a faith decision. And yet when it comes to me, all of a sudden living by faith is a challenge. I said, God, I need some tangible evidence. I said, I really don't understand. Watch this. Last night, I'm sitting in the airport. I'm sitting in the airport, and I'm sitting at the gate that has been assigned for my flight to come home. Stay with me, class. It is up on the monitor, Norfolk, boarding at this time. I'm sitting there. We had partners that, was, that were in their um, gate house waiting as well. And so when I saw them, I knew the flight was going to be all right. They probably were like, I saw him. I know the flight is going to be all right. You never know who you're banking on. So I'm sitting there, Elder Wayne, at the gate, and the lady comes out over the loudspeaker and says, for all of you who are on flight 4779 to Norfolk, you're at the wrong gate. I apologize. The gate has been changed. Immediately, I got my backpack, got my beats, put them on my neck, and got up and walked to the other gate. Now, watch this, class. I did not stop and look at a monitor to check whether the lady was telling me the truth or not. I do not know the lady. For all I know, the lady could have been pulling a joke on me. But by faith, when she said it over the loudspeaker, I automatically got up and began to walk to the other gate. Watch this. At the other gate, the monitor said, I'm sorry, but we're sleeping right now, which means the monitor was not working properly. I did not get up and go to the big monitor in the airport to check. I did not ask anybody else sitting there in the gatehouse, is this the Norfolk flight? I simply sat there and operated by faith. Okay, you didn't catch that? Okay, when, when we got ready to get on the airplane, it was so amazing, Pastor Marcus, watch this. The guy said, you can now start lining up to get on the plane. When we got ready to get on the plane, I did not ask to check the, the history of the plane's maintenance. I did not get introduced to the pilot. For all I know, he could have been souped up on some cocaine or some heroin. I didn't ask him to take a breath test. I simply got myself in line. I don't know if the person in front of me really had the number that was in front of my number because I didn't ask them to show me any evidence that they were a I knew I was A50, and the sign said, if you are A50, you stand right here. I stood there. When I got on the plane,
plane. I did not ask the stewardess how long she had been flying. I did not ask the pilot, did he have his credentials? I did not ask the man that put the fuel in the plane, did he check properly to make sure that there was enough petroleum in the gas tank for us to be able to fly all the way to Norfolk? I did not ask the pilot which route was he going to take? Was he going to land early and come over Norfolk State or would he fly out over the Chesapeake Bay and make the U-turn and come back through a little creek? I didn't ask him what flight he was going to ask. When the lady said, do you want something to drink? I said, yeah, I'll take a ginger ale. I don't know what kind of ginger ale she gave me. I don't know if it really was ginger ale. I don't know if she breathed in the cup. I don't know if she let something else go in the cup. I don't know if the ice was clean or the ice was dirty. I don't know if she got the ice out of a good container or a bad container. But when she handed it to me, I drank that ginger ale right on down and had the audacity to crunch every piece of ice in the cup. I don't know when she handed me the little pretzels with the little Cheez-Its in them, if the people that put them in the cellophane go old school for my grandmother, if they put them in the cellophane, if they had gloves on their hand or they had just finished sneezing in their hand, but I ate every one of those pretzels and was hoping that the lady next to me that had fallen asleep did not want hers. I was going to knock hers out as well. I got on the plane not knowing any information. I allowed them to take me 37,000 feet. Watch this. I don't know if we ever got to 37,000 feet because I had no way of measuring our elevation, but that's what the pilot told me. I don't know if the pressure in the plane was proper. I did all of that by faith and then coming here on Sunday and God, the King of Kings, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh says, will you give me a dime out of every dollar? And I said, oh, I ain't got that kind of faith, God. You ought to look at somebody and tell them we got faith everywhere else. <laughs> it dawned on me that we live by faith every day in every other area of our life. But when it comes to God, God says, bring me a dime out of every dollar. I promise you I'll take care of you. I don't know, God. We can read his track record. We got testimonies of his track record. We've got experiences of his track record. We know how he's already brought us through so much other stuff, and yet we wrestle to operate by faith in our religious life but then don't have any problem operating by faith in every other area of our life. Can I suggest to you that I'm getting ready to help us walk through the greatest faith text in the Bible. Marcus, this is the greatest faith text in the Bible. We, we relegated it to the seven last words on Good Friday. But can you imagine, coach, being on a cross, getting ready to get crucified, and in the middle of you and your old running partner is another cross. And the dude on the cross in the middle is the person that you have to have faith in. Y'all just missed it. Okay. I'm asking you to save my life while you getting killed. This brother had to operate with more faith than anybody in all of the scripture because how do you handle Believing in God when it looks like God is in trouble. Elder God, this brother has the nerve to operate with faith while Jesus is getting killed. See, here's the problem. Anybody can believe in Jesus on Sunday morning. It takes a different kind of faith to believe in Jesus on Friday afternoon. 
Oh, I wish I had a praying church right there. And yet this brother has the audacity, elder, to pull up a level of faith on the cross and believe in Jesus then, okay? Y'all, y'all, y'all looking at me like you're going to judge the man on the cross. That means then anybody that lives post-Calvary, it should be easy for you to walk by faith. This brother walks by faith pre-Calvary. He doesn't know if there's really going to be a Sunday morning. So the question for the behavioral objective today is, how do you know it's real? Here it is. First of all, you know your faith is real. Y'all ready to class? Shout cue on the way. Elbow your neighbor and tell him, I'll shout on your behalf. You can write it on my account. You know your faith is real when you start to silence opposition. All these folk talking about they living by faith, but you never shut anybody down. You cannot live by faith and allow anybody around you to say stuff that is not faith language and you not step to it. When your, when your faith starts to really operate, you'll find yourself silencing stuff that doesn't line up with the word, not because you're trying to disrespect anybody, but because where I am in my life, I cannot allow people around me to put in my ear stuff that doesn't line up with the faith that is required for my destiny. Can we stop right there and just worship a moment? I dare you to look at somebody and tell them, silence some stuff around you. You got to learn how to shut some stuff down. Okay, Wallace, Wallace, I got, I got scripture for you. Listen to what this, here it is, verse 40. In verse 39, thief on one side said, yo, if you really the Messiah, then what I want you to do is save me and you. Okay, that's the thief on this side. If you really are who you say you are, save both of us. The thief on this side said, hey, yo, B, that's kind of crazy right there. That's what verse 40 says. Look at it. Verse 40 says, but the other criminal protested. Like, man, you so dumb. You don't even fear God when you're getting ready to die. Okay, okay. Y'all just missed a turn. I have never understood how people can be mean before they have a life-defining moment and then mean after they have a life-defining Oh, no. Now, now I understand how you mean before you have heart surgery or you mean before you come out of cancer. But I don't understand how you can be mean after you come out of cancer. Somebody ought to give God glory. I don't know how you can still be wicked when you know the accident should have killed you, but by the grace of God, shoot your boy some hearts right there online. It's amazing to me how we take for granted what God has brought us through. That's the first. The thief over here says, B, I'm not going to let you articulate that to my Savior and I not step to it. You crazy. Okay. Y'all, 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 watch this. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, don't be offended if I correct you. It's all in faith. It's all in faith, babe. Every now and then when you go visit your aunt that used to cuss everybody out, before cancer and you go visit her after cancer is now healed and she's still cussing you need to say auntie i can't i can't let you go out like that auntie you ought to be the first one in church you ought to be the first one giving god glory you ought to be the first one remorseful you ought to be the first one repentant you know your faith is real when you start to silence opposition but watch this You know your faith is real when not only do you silence opposition, watch this Marcus, but when you seize opportunity, seize, not see, but seize opportunity. Play it out, y'all. 
on Calvary that day are three people. All three of them are going to die. The guy on the left is going to die. The guy on the right is going to die. And the man in the middle, whether you can handle it or not, is going to die. Here's what's crazy. The man on the left, Elder, and the man on the right have a captive audience with I am that I am. Okay, I'm setting you up so pretty. Both of them have the same level of access to a man that has opened blinded eyes, healed lepers, raised Lazarus from the dead. They have the best opportunity of anybody at Calvary. Dude over here says, hey, yo, if you really are who you say you are, save us. The one over here says, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember a brother. I don't know what he's talking about. He's tripping, but remember me. Okay, Mr. Darlene, I got to go there. I got to go there. That teaches me several things. This, this is going to be a little hard. Go ahead and swallow right now. Go ahead and swallow if you got some water with you. Go ahead and take a little swig of water because this is going to be hard. Starting today, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to miss your moment because people that are with you don't want to go where you are called to go. Okay, okay, okay. They, they missed it. They missed it. They missed it. Watch this clock. Listen to the syntax. This man says, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. The problem is, many of us in this room would have said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember us. Everybody cannot go where God is calling you to go. Oh God, I'm preaching better than you saying amen in the room. Shoot your boy some hearts right there. Look at somebody and tell them you got to be willing to leave some people behind in order to go where God is calling you in this season. You're going to have to be willing to say, I love you. In fact, I wouldn't be up here if it was not for you. Hanging out with you got me up here. Hanging out with him is going to get me delivered. Okay, watch this. Woo. Lord, I know where I'm going. I've been giving y'all JV points right now. I'm going to kill you with the varsity point at the end. This brother sits there and says, hold on now. This is Jesus. Mary's baby. Y'all want me to go there? Bright and morning star. Lily in my valley. Bridge over my troubled water. A father when I'm fatherless. A mother when I'm motherless. And by providence, out of all the people that I could get strung up with, providence allows me to get strung up with him. I see God working in this. Okay, you missed it. You ought to look at somebody and tell them, you got to see God even in the situations that don't look like God is there. If it was not for me getting crucified, I would never have the opportunity to be able to speak to him this intimately. So watch this. He says, well, you know what? Since I'm here, and since he's there, Ain't no need for me to waste this opportunity. I'm going to come right down your street. I'm going to come right down your street. I'm going to come right down the street, Mark. Watch this. I've never understood why folks get on their knees at night and waste the opportunity of having an audience with the King of Kings 
to talk about co-workers God I just want to let you know they treat me like at the shipyard okay so you just had an opportunity to pour your heart out to I am that I am and you wasted the opportunity talking about how folks treating you at work God I just want to let you know I ain't really feeling that music that they playing behind Bishop so you just wasted your opportunity talking about somebody else using their gift when I get that's why I ain't never understood when I get to heaven I'm gonna ask God now when I get to heaven I ain't got no questions for God when I get to heaven I'm gonna be so glad that by grace I made it over I don't care what street you got me living in. I don't care who my neighbors are. I don't care whether my house is smaller or bigger. I'm just glad to be in the number. Do I have somebody in here that'll give God glory and say, God, you've been too good. To, you brought me too far. You healed me. You saved me. You delivered me. I can't waste time or opportunity. So when it's real, watch this. Watch this. I'm going, to mess, I'm going to mess now, Bernard. I'm going to be messy now. Here I am over here. Jesus in the middle. Pastor Ferber, here it is. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. There's a, I ain't got time for all that. I ain't got time for all that. I don't know how long I have before this Roman soldier comes and sticks this spear in the side of my Savior. So I'm going to seize this opportunity right now. I'm going to give you opportunity right now in the room and online. Why don't you get up right now and put your petition in front of God. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you're waiting on. Call it out. Don't be ashamed. Seize this opportunity right now. God, I need peace. God, I need a promotion. God, I need to be able to have a night's sleep. God, I need to get over this depression. God, I need to be able to have self-esteem. God, I need more gratitude. Open up your mouth, Zion, and see. The opportunity, watch this. Okay. So you know it's real. Am I doing all right, y'all? Am I doing all right online? Y'all shoot me some hearts if I'm doing all right. So... So you know it's real when it silences opposition. You know it's real when it seizes opportunities. Watch this. You know it's real when it surrenders offenses. Okay. Okay, watch this, Pastor Furman. Dude on the left says, hey, if you really are who you say you are, save yourself and me. Okay. Look at verse 41. Dude over here says, Hey, bro, check yourself. We deserve to die for our crimes. But this man hasn't done anything wrong. Okay. Huh? Mm. You cannot have real faith and real faith not push you to repent. See, <laughs> you can live by faith and fornicate. Stay with me. You just can't live by faith and not repent for fornicating. You can live by faith and commit adultery you just can't live by faith and not repent for committing adultery because the faith in you is going to rise up to the level that the spirit in you convicts you that you know that won't right right there. You know that won't the will of God right there. Somebody ought to give God glory right there. You ought to look at somebody and tell them faith doesn't mean I don't mess up. Faith just means I confess up. Faith doesn't mean I don't get it wrong. Faith just means when I get it wrong, I try to get it right. I'm not perfect, but I know when I'm wrong. And I owe you something, I owe God something. Thank you for not killing me.
me when I was in adultery. Thank you for not killing me when I was fornicating. Thank you for not killing me when I was gossiping. Thank you for not killing me when I was lying. Hey, God. You know it's real. When living contrary to the will of God is not comfortable. So all these folk that are mean as H. Spirit of my brother almost rose up in me. I promise you I almost said hell. You cannot be mean and continue to live by faith. Because your faith, if it's real, is going to push you to go over there and say, I'm sorry for what I said to you. I don't know what got over me the other day. I ain't proud of it. Please forgive me. This brother gets up there and his faith is so real that he said, let me just tell y'all something. You and me deserve to die. We guilty. This guy hasn't done anything wrong. But you and I, I dare you to look at somebody and just tell them, you and I, look at somebody else and tell them, you and I, you and I deserve to die. Let's just set the atmosphere and get that straight. There is no saint in the room without a past. And there is no sinner in the room without a future. You and I deserve to die. But it's because grace is amazing that God looks beyond my faults and still sees my need. Real faith, real faith will not tolerate you fooling yourself. Okay. Watch this, that's first. Oh God, I feel your glory in the room. Oh God, I feel your glory in the room. God, I feel your glory in the room. God, I feel your glory in the room. God, we give you glory. Thank you for not killing us, although we deserve to die. Thank you for loving us. Oh God, I lift up holy hands and I give God glory. I gotta go, Aisha. Oh, I gotta go, but I feel the presence of God in the room. Bernard, you know what I love? You know what I love about the story? Elder Gary, you know what I love about this brother's confession? We got some nosy folks in here. We got some nosy folks in here right now. I know you're gonna be on Facebook as soon as church is over saying, what did the thief do? Why do you need to know? God knew what he did. He's not confessing to you. He's confessing to God. Can we stop right there real quick before I give you point four and just worship God for keeping your secrets? Somebody ought to give him glory because all you need to know is I'm sorry. You don't need to know what I'm sorry for. You just need to know I messed up. But you don't need to know what I did when I messed up. That's between me. Somebody ought to worship him right there. Somebody ought to worship him right there. Somebody ought to worship him right there. Somebody ought to give him glory because he's able to keep a secret. Somebody ought to give him adoration because he didn't broadcast your dysfunction. Somebody ought to raise up holy hands because he didn't announce your transgression. Valencia, I have not heard us yet. Lori, I have not heard us yet. I'm gonna shoot you with one bullet and I'm going to my seat. You know it's real when it silences opposition. You know it's real 
when it seizes opportunity, you know it's real. When it surrenders offenses, Joey, we know it's real when it sustains optimism. Okay. Elbow your neighbor and tell him, I bishop, I bishop got skills. Put that in the chat right there. You know I got low, low self-esteem, so boost my self-esteem. Just put it in the chat right now and say, the man got some skills. The man got some skills. There is, there is, Sister Donna, a contextual dilemma in the text that I promise you you have never heard anybody raise before. First time today. The dilemma is in verse 43. Elder in verse 42, the man says, look, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Oh, I messed around, preached myself happy. I'm sorry, y'all. In 42, he says, remember me. Clock in 43, Jesus replies. And look at what Jesus says. Jesus says, I assure you, today, you will be with me in paradise. Oh, God. I knew that would get people that ain't clapped, the whole service clapping now. All we want to hear is God answer our prayer. But wait a minute. It's Friday. Okay, we ain't got no Bible scholars. How you gonna promise me that we gonna be in paradise today? When you going in the grave until Sunday. So you just promised me that you and I are going to heaven today. But they getting ready to kill you, put you in a grave until Sunday morning. They missing it. How you gonna promise me something that you know is not gonna happen today? Today, you shall be with me in paradise. But I'm getting ready to go in a grave just like you. Woo. Watch this, watch this. And Jerry, even Sunday, when he gets up, he doesn't go to paradise. Y'all know your Bible? When Jesus gets up Sunday, he's gonna still be on earth. Cause Mary is gonna see him. And he's gonna say, don't touch me right now, Mary. Jesus doesn't go to paradise for 53 more days. Three days he stays in the grave and according to the story of Pentecost, 50 days he tells them to keep waiting for me so I can pour out my spirit upon everybody before I ascend contextual dilemma I gotta go how do you reconcile this Lord that Jesus tells the man today you're gonna be with me in paradise <laughs> but Marcus we can ready to get killed and go in that grave right now it's because what he's really saying is God help me I'm gonna answer your prayer today but you won't see the manifestation of the answer for 53 more days. Okay, see now can't nobody shout on this right here. 
Can't nobody shout on that because we want instant gratification. What if God has said to you, I've already provided the house. I've already provided your healing. I've already got your children to school. I've already got you the new job. I've already got you the new house. But you waiting for a house to drop out of the sky right out there in the parking lot. Maybe what God is saying is today I heard your prayer, but it might take two months before you see it manifest. Today I healed your body, but you might have to take some more chemo before you see it. Today I delivered your finances, but your lights might be off next month. I'm out of time. Let's rest on our feet in the room. I'm going to ask you to rest on your feet at home. You know your faith is real when what God says to you today, you able to hold on to, even if you don't see it happen tomorrow. See, our problem is just because he says it, you got to listen to what he says. Digging his hand, it's as if Jesus knew the challenge. Because he says, I assure you. In other words, saying, it's not going to happen right now, but I assure you that what you've asked is going to happen. But I know your faith might waver a little bit, so I'm going to assure you that just because they put you in that grave does not mean I lied to you. I assure you. Can we as a collective house online and in person just lift up that word, assure me God, assure me God, assure me God, assure me God. If you're watching online or you're in this room and you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your savior, All you got to do is text the word accept to 71441. If you're in this room and you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, real quickly I'm going to ask you to just come stand right here. If you're in the room and you desire to rededicate your life to Christ, I'm going to ask you to come stand right here. If you're in the room or online and you desire to rededicate your life to Christ, which is to ask God to give you another chance, all you got to do is text the word RESTART if you're watching around the world, RESTART to 71441. And if you're in this room and you believe this is your church home and you want to connect in a tangible way to this church, all you got to do is come stand right here at the altar. If you're watching online, all you got to do is text the word mount up to 71441. We only have about 10 seconds, so I need you to move right now. If you're in the room and you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, come stand right here. If you're in the room and you desire to rededicate your life to Christ, come stand right here. And if you're in the room and you believe this is your church home, you've been hanging out with us using COVID as the reason why you have not connected, this is your day to connect right here. Would you just stand right there, wherever you are? Come on, come on. Online, if you desire to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, text the word accept to 71441. Online, if you desire to rededicate your life to Christ, text the word restart to 71441. And online, if you desire to become a partner of the Mount Chesapeake or Mount Virtual, text the word mount up to 71441. Now, all I'm going to ask y'all to do is do me a favor. Stretch your hand to them and just say, God, right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for growth in the body of Christ. Thank you for this man and this woman. Make sure, come on, make sure that their faith is real in Jesus' name. Whichever one of the invitations you're responding to, if you just pull your cell phone out, text either mount up if you're joining the church, restart if you're accepting Christ, or restart if you're rededicating your life to Christ and accept if you are making a decision to live for Christ. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before the throne of God. To the only almighty God, be glory and majesty, dominion and power. I call each and every one of us blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when we come, blessed when we go. In Jesus' name, amen.